how do you define success in your life? Hey, my name is Justin. If you're new here, go ahead and hit subscribe and ding the bell for more videos to help your worship team. The wrong definition of success. Guys, we live in a day and age where your popularity, your Facebook followers, Instagram followers, the size of your building, the size of your church means a whole lot. We are a video-driven culture, a video-driven generation. If I look at someone and they have something that's big or very, very successful from my earthly realm estimation, I'm going to say, yeah, you're legit. And if I see someone else who has something small, just my natural inclination in the fleshly sense is going to say, hmm, yeah, I guess, you know, whatever, you're doing what you're doing, right? God's definition of success is very, very different than our definition of success. Jesus, the one that we say so loudly, I want to be like you, Jesus. But when you actually stop and look at his life, you're wondering, well, do I really want to be like you, Jesus? Because I have visions and dreams and goals and things I want to accomplish in the here and now. I'm not so much interested in waiting till I'm 30 years old. I mean, imagine being a 30 year old and if you live at home with your parents, you're probably smart for saving money. But imagine, you know, they got married young in Jesus's day, right? In the Jewish culture. Imagine Jesus was 30 years old, still living with his mom and dad. And then he finally, you know, leaves the house. If we say we want to be like Jesus, we are signing up for a life lived for his ways, for his plans, for his purposes, not ours. How do you define success in your life? A little bit about me, guys. I am type A to the max. I love working. I love putting my hands to work and seeing myself accomplish something. I ran into an issue. This is probably four or five years ago that I spent um, just an entire day, you know, just giving myself to this one project and I was building and writing and creating and, and it was hard work. I wasn't in, you know, Facebook world. I wasn't on Netflix being distracted. I was working. I had a solid eight hour day of work, right? So I come home to my wife and the first thing I'm thinking as I was driving home, the first thing I'm thinking is strategizing how I can spend some time with my wife and my kids put my kids down for bed and how I can get up to the office for another three or four hours of work and just burn the candle on that end. And it wasn't because I had a deadline. It was because I felt unsatisfied. I didn't feel successful or restful about my day. I felt like I had to do more and more and more. And so I began to pray about that with the Lord and talk about that on the drive home. The Lord began to speak to me about identity related to my success. My identity with the Lord, I was actually putting into how successful I was in the here and now on any given day of how much work I did. Yes, I am successful because I put in a 14 hour day or yes, I am successful because I, I launched this business project or I la launched this song and it had X amount of views and X amount of time. And that's you know much better than this person, not as good as this person. And my definition of success and my identity was so earthly based and so worldly based. Here is the definition of success from David. When you study the life of David, you will begin to see David did not live by the earthly standards and metrics of success. Here was David's success metric. God loves me. I am seeking to love God. Therefore, I am successful. Any other metric of success, I promise, will get you derailed. It will get you derailed. God loves you and you are seeking to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Therefore, you are successful. Now, I'm not saying, great, you can just be a flake for the rest of your life. You can just tell your boss, hey man, God loves me and I love God, man, I'm successful. No, obviously, you know, and no one's probably thinking that, but I just have to say it for that one person who might be watching this. There are things that we want to excellently steward. And you know, the Bible talks about being a good steward, multiplying your talents that you're given. It talks about in the book of Matthew, let your yes that you tell someone be yes. Follow through with what you tell someone that you're going to do. So the Bible talks a lot about that. There's uh, you know, several proverbs that talk a lot about being a faithful steward, following through with your word, and being excellent with what you're um, called to do from the Lord. But your definition of success at the end of the day is not determined by the praises of someone else, by the size of what you build, or how earthly success would say that you are. Your definition of success that will never derail you is when you lay your head on that pillow at night when you wake up in the morning, as you go to another day of work, as you seek to love your spouse, as you seek to love your kids, as you seek to love your friends, I am successful because God deeply 
loves me. We could we could talk about that for hours, guys, but I wanna mention one verse for you to meditate on, specifically on that thought that God loves you. It's in John chapter 15, verse nine. John 15, verse nine. And it's Jesus talking to his disciples. He says, just as the Father in heaven has loved me, so also I love you. Just as the heavenly Father loves Jesus, so Jesus loves you. Jesus is crazy about you. He doesn't just love you, he likes you. He enjoys you. Psalm 139, he formed you in your mother's womb. The thoughts he has towards you are more than the sands of the sea. When is the last time you talked to God, you sat down, you didn't do your prayer list of asks and wants that day, you said, God, do you enjoy me? God, I know you love me, but will you let me feel that you like me? These thoughts that you have towards me that are more than the sands of the sea, God, let me hear the gentle whisper of your voice today. This must be our definition of success. Now, this isn't a, you know, a little video that you watch and then suddenly you get it. Guys, this is a starting point. This definition of our success that God loves us and I'm seeking to love God. David failed miserably. So God, he had a revelation that God loved him and then he loved God in weakness. But I'm here to tell you something. Weak love is real love. I lived under the oppression as a young person, as a teenager, that my love for God was determined by whether or not I sinned or how many times I sinned that day. And most of the time, guys, I failed miserably. Most of the time I went to bed not feeling that God loved me. He definitely didn't like me because I messed up and I sinned again. Guys, David sinned so much, but he got back up because he understood how deeply God loved him. And then he offered his weak love back to him. Weak love is real love. Your definition of success for your life has nothing to do with what you build with your hands. It has to do with your heart, the internal setting. And I can imagine, you know, Jesus, as he's coming up out of that water, and people are wondering, what did you do that pleased the Father so much? And Jesus could say to them, you have no idea what I've built inside my heart because no eye can see it. But I have built this beautiful kingdom where I know my father is lovesick over me. He delights in me as his son, and I delight in him as my father. Your definition of success is that God loves you, and you are seeking to wholeheartedly love God.